good morning everyone welcome back to my channel so we have our new prompt garden bench or seat in our garden somewhere to sit relax and enjoy the garden so with that in mind i had a look at this piece first this is the transition of color and i put a swing in under this branch uh, a couple weeks ago so i'm going to give this one a pass because i don't have a lot of space left to do some little prompts so i'm thinking i got a little bit of space here but not a lot i don't think i'm going to do anything on this piece so color wave will have a pass this week if i get time i'll do some more seed stitch around the place and just adding you know general stitching so yeah i, I think i'll save those few little morsels of space for um, another prompt that may be more suitable for the piece. So this one will have a pass. So I'll just pop that one aside. Now this one does have a little bit of room and I'm thinking we can certainly get something into this piece. The only space I have left here is through this region. So I think we can get something in here or do we? I sort of feel like this is a roof, well, it, not a roof. This needs to be finished off as in its own little story. It needs something through here just to sort of encapsulate that because other than a tree coming up behind or some more flowers, which is sort of using valuable space, I feel like this could have a bit of a decorative morsels put in here so i need to keep that in mind i don't think a bench seat sitting on top of that would look right it's sort of that's what i'm thinking maybe i do something up here and i maybe i do a, a tree up this side could this here be indicating a tree Hmm, okay, so I guess, or do I do another swing? I do so love the swing. It's technically not the prompt. I do, no, I will do a bench seat. It will work in with this because I can use these chocolatey tones like I did for the greenhouse. It's sort of giving us that skeletal feel. Does that make sense? Not, um... not a solid piece there may be a tree so bench seat what's a bench seat look like i'll just grab pen and paper and have a little um sketch just a bit of a back on it maybe and then a couple legs underneath it doesn't have to be too elaborate just to indicate that there's something going on there. Could do a chair. I think I'd want to do a series of chairs like Sarah did, one chair by itself. Oh, that might be all right, leaning against a tree. Maybe I'll get my tree in first. Well, okay. Do we just do a random tree with a bit of foliage coming out the top so it's nestled that size would work could probably put the tree to the side I've got my iron going here as well nice and hot so if we find that it looks a bit daggy I can You know use the iron um, where do I put my trunk do I keep it right to the side that would allow more foliage let's just get a trunk in like stop overthinking it girl and just 
it's just, oh, we can't even draw on that hemp, but we get the general idea. Then the foliage would come out through here. We can always bring the trunk down a little bit further so we can get a little bit more foliage. And my chair maybe sits through here. A little guy. Just a little stool than the usual. Okay, I've got a bit of a bit of a plan. Now what is in our boxes of tricks here? I've got the splash of colour box that we've been chewing through. Now remembering we've got to stay in the, look at those flowers, aren't they? Cute. Stay within the colours, girl. Stop. Most of this is tones. I wonder if that could be a tree trunk. Pull that out. There's nothing else here. I was ratting through all this on the cruise looking for morsels so that's sort of a bit missing I could use that fabric there for the, the tree but I'll keep looking I have pilfered a lot out of there we're sort of coming to the end of the project and you can tell by all the supplies that are pulled out on day one so got a little bit of crocheting on that edge we've got some I might make a bit of a trunk. Do I see anything in that? That might make some nice foliage for the tree. There's some brown. It's a bit of a, a bit like a garden more so than a tree some threads there I'll pull them out I've got that little morsel I don't think there's much else my goodness we're getting a bit lean here well hang on what's this I have worked some of that in further up pull it out you never know what was this oh that's our ideas oh I did have a wishing well idea in there hmm Okay. What can we do in the way of a tree? I don't know if this will work, but I'm just going to cut a random, random stuff tree is shape bit of a tree I don't know if I like that let's have a look at this foliage Ooh, okay that might I'm going to do this. I actually don't mind. I wonder if I can. I see cut out this little morsel here, and that is the top of the tree. Who knows where this will end up? I think the bench is the easy bit. It's making the bench work within your garden. That's the challenge. The bench is just a few little stitches here and there. Once you work out your design for your bench, if you want something ornate or something a little rustic, I think I'll go the rustic with this because my wheelbarrow has that plank look, that sort of line. So I think that's... That's how the, the bench will look. I'm just wondering if this little 
embroidery piece from that napkin can become the base for the tree. Yeah, I think it can, but how do we make it fit? Do we bring it down? No, we can't because we've got this. But then if I put a something decorative along there. Oh, I do like that. Looks like a tree to me. And then maybe the... center oh I don't know where am I heading with this let me just iron out what I had sketched up here because I think I'm going in a different direction so that's I'm wondering if I do can I get a bit of a slope on that tree it's a little bit too straight up and down so then the roof of the tree the the canopy of the tree is off center. What other little morsels are on this? I could probably pinch these little flowers too. So I'm thinking I need to just build my canopy out a little bit to give me the room for the bench seat but I'm not not sure yet so I'm going to nibble out some of these little pieces I might even take I might even take that little shape there because that might help to make the tree A little more lopsided does that make sense like things like that can help adjust the shape of the tree yeah that's better and then I've still got this little flower so we could tuck him up in there so now my tree is not so you know straight up and down yeah I like that it nestles nicely over there, so I still have this space here. I could then, what do we have that can give us a, finish that off? Oh, I don't mind that. That sort of finishes one story. Oh, I've got it down there. Do I want to use the same piece? What about... Some crocheting that would work that would work do I do it upside down and that would give me a surface to because the crocheting I feel like will overpower the garden because my bench seat's gonna be so small and all I'll see is this crochet ring. So if I turn that upside down and make that the frame for the scene below, I can then stitch into the bottom of that. So this is what I mean. So if I take that back, So I feel like I've uh, framed the story below. Yeah, I like that. So that little one is there. Can shorten up my tree trunk a little bit. Yeah. So we're telling another story. I think that will work. So I'm just going to pin that.
I was wondering how this would fit. This little motif's been sitting there the whole time. I put it on on week one when we were, you know, adding our backgrounds and I thought, oh, I wonder how that, but I actually like it now because it's disappeared behind the tree trunk. So I'm happy with that. That little extension I had as well, and I didn't know how that was going to work in, but the tree can now sort of creep over there a little bit. I love how the tree is open with these little little scroll things. I don't know what the scallops. So that's going to be, I am really happy with that. I can do some little embroidery flowers around my um, seat. I can still see red pen up there. Can't decide about these pens. I was reading one of the comments in the chat where a beautiful quilt was sent across the countryside on an aeroplane and when it got to the exhibition it was full of the pen and that's because the plane would have dropped to probably below zero in the cargo bay and it reactivated the pen so it's a bit of a concern I think because the most of our pieces just stay in our craft rooms so you might turn on an air conditioning or a fan and it doesn't seem to be triggering anything that I've noticed so far but yeah I heard read that story in the chat and I'm like oh these blooming pens, they're so handy, but I just love them. I think I'll trim that. Yeah. I'll wait until I stitch it down because sometimes the lace will wriggle around a bit and just having that little bit extra length. So I've got a tree. So now the bench seat. Gosh, I don't have much room. Talk about making it hard on myself. The tree will work. I think I'll just do some stitching all over that to hold it down. Do I do a swing? I'll sketch in a, a seat, sort of. to use a really fine thread to get that seat to look right. I think I want to swing. I don't know. My seat's dodgy. I don't like it. I feel like it's going to be very muddy. I think I'm going to do a swing. My seat is going to be swinging in the breeze. crookedly. It's swinging all right. Um, maybe that will work. Maybe it's a tree in the distance and a tiny little seat swinging. I don't know. It's my story, I guess. <laughs> you really have to let go of the fact that nothing's in proportion with this piece. It's a, a collage of concepts coming together, which is just so refreshing because when you're doing a piece that you want it all to be in proportion, yeah, it's just the degree of difficulty is higher. You've just got to focus on one little morsel and tell your little story in that morsel. I'm just going to use this brown thread. To stitch it. I've got a few ideas for my French garden. I really want to start filling in that big space. And the bench seat will be a beautiful centerpiece, I think. 
and I started going through some of my pattern books that I was looking at. What am I doing? I've just put a stitch there that really is not needed. Yeah, I started going through some of my pattern books or, you know, stitchery books that I was drawing inspiration from earlier in the project. And there's a couple images there that just would be perfect as the next centerpiece. But I just don't know if I want to be true to where a bench seat would sit under a tree. Or I want to stay abstract and have the bench seat nestled in under some gigantic flowers. I sort of, I've been talking a tree for weeks on that French garden panel. But then when the bench seat came along and then I've spotted some patterns that I've just never stitched. I've had them for years and I'd love to incorporate some of them. And I thought, oh, what do I do? What do I do? So I thought I'll do this one first because it's a nice little project to get my head sort of, you know, thinking about the prompt. So that's how this one's come to be first off the rank. I'm not sure what will happen with um, the, the doily one. I'll have to have a hunt through my doilies and see if I can find one with a bench seat. Are these two threads? Yeah. I want the the rope holding the seat in the air to be finer than the seat itself. Like the seat's just an old plank that someone's hung up for the kids or for the lady of the garden to sit and contemplate. Oh, I had another idea. I could probably do a little a little table. So you could do a, a chair with a table. Um, not that I'm doing that, but a, there's a pen, like a table that you could do um, something like that with legs, like a little, little table and you could put um, I don't know, even some needlework sitting on the table and a pin cushion. She's sitting in the garden doing some needlework. And then your your seat could be a similar style. Oh, this is very rough, but just gives you a bit of an idea. You know, just a little chair that would be next to someone sitting doing needlework. You could even go as crazy and do yourself a, a lady. Just keep it real simple, triangular dress, little feet coming down, some little arms up to a shoulder, just a little or a little roundish face, put a turban like a scarf on a head, some little ringlets. Light, like keep it real simple, but you could do a little person sitting at a table, you know, doing some stitchery. You could have some fabric in a hand sitting in the garden, just relaxing. From there, you could do a tree for the scene, just to frame it out a little bit. Yeah, just, I don't know, just do some little doodles and See where it takes you. I might do some pearls on my tree like they're little apples. I'm just going to couch down that little rope so it doesn't go anywhere. even put do the second one oh that's caught behind that pin 
sort of putting the horse before the cart here a little bit. I should stitch down that tree. That's all good. You take your time. You can dodge all those pinheads. I don't really stitch in my garden, but I often see Anne Brooks sitting out in her garden in the morning sun doing some stitching. I've got two puppy dogs, and if I was to take my needlework outside, Pepper would be immediately jumping on my lap for a cuddle. Bandit, he just dribbles. That's not gonna, it's just not gonna happen. There we go. We've got a little swing under our tree. So now I can do some small embroidery there. Now, where's my thread? I might just stitch down that, um, that piece of crocheting there. And then I can have a play maybe with some, maybe I can do the cheese cloth at the same time. I don't think there's anything here now that I need. So I'm going to put those little bits. Oh, I haven't looked at that properly yet. I haven't looked at that yet. I'm pretty sure I'm finished with those. So let's put them away. Is there anything here? Not really. It's very big. Whatever I put in next needs to be really, really small, like tiny small. That's interesting. I don't think, or can I use this? Maybe I use this to connect the scene. I'm not real impressed with the way that looks there. I've got the lace coming down and the lace going across. To me, it's a little bit meh, could be a bit better. So I'm wondering if I can drift that down that side. How would that look if that stitched in there? Yeah, I like that. Just adds a little bit of interest little morsel and that's been kicking around on my desk what about this does that soften the I don't mind that either I'll zoom in so you guys can see what I'm sort of thinking so I just feel like this is a bit too simple here so I could overstitch this in and we trim that flower back. I just sort of don't mind. It sort of makes it look really busy and deep and, you know, lots of morsels happening. The other thing I could do is add another stripe of something like that like a morsel but I still feel I've got this little t-junction happening it's just not interesting could that work in over here just to soften that scene a little yeah so it's a layer upon layer yeah that's what I'm going to do okay so instead of using cheesecloth to do my typical garden, I'm going to put, I'm going to put that there. Then I'm going to lay this here just to get it nice and chunky and thick. And there's my little seat in the distance. Mm. Okay, so I need to trim this back. So that's going to go like that. 
and I can then sit that there. It's like a, a vine going up that side. Just need to nibble a little bit more out of that bottom corner. My husband's up. He's making noise in the kitchen. I'm going to take a little bit more out of there. This has got some gorgeous cut work in it, this little piece. Just never know where these little morsels are going to come in handy. Do I take more out? What would I see? I might do a little bit more just to get the little piece to be a little finer. Mm. Yeah, I like that. It's getting really thick and full of texture. All right, what we might do is let's get this background. See, even that little piece is rather cute. We might be able to poke that in somewhere, sort of drift it through. It's the vine that's going up through all of the pieces. I don't know. I'm just making up stories now to justify my behaviour. <laughs> So I'm just going to stitch down these little layers here with some little itty bitty stitches. Okay, our usual technique. Ow. I'll come back after camera is off and just make sure everything is secure, but I can get a few stitches down. Get rid of some pins. I really like that layered piece there it's sort of building up a bit of a like i said i felt like i needed to finish this story this prompt frame it out so i'm happy with that that's been bugging me for ages that doily in the background it was just like this random thing that i picked up off the desk and just stitched it down i thought oh well i can always remove it. i think i said that at the time i could always remove remove it if it was just not the right thing in the right spot but that's worked out a treat it sort of has disappeared now into the background it's not as not as predominant i do have some space on the other side of the tree now so like a ground so if there's a prompt that could pop in there it would work as well so i'm happy with that we're sort of creating little little pockets of storytelling when you're doing a narrow piece like this. What's well, the same, I guess, for all of them? The uh, French garden is just a bigger version. You've got pockets of stories, but the stories are the size of an A4 page. Now I can catch the bottom of this tree as I come back through. Coming back along, whoops, and threaded the needle. Well, thank you everyone for your kind comments on my Percy the Peacock piece. Absolutely thrilled with it myself. You probably could tell that I was pretty impressed with it so and um, yes I am considering framing it and the little pattern that I use the little antique pattern I'm thinking I will attach it to the back of the frame I might get it laminated and then it's just on the back so yeah you turn the frame around and there's the piece that inspired it otherwise the little piece is just going to get you know, lost, isn't it? It disappears into the abyss of our rooms. But, um, yeah, I, I'm going to call my aunt over Easter and just get her to take a look at the image and see if she can date it for me. Because if it is a vintage design, 
well then I might be able to scan it well I won't be able to scan it because it's it's too dark oh, maybe I can if someone can remove that darkness when it scans and um, I might look at putting it in my Etsy store so if anyone wants to use the little guy as um, a start to a peacock of your own it'll be there but I do need to check its age if it's too young if uh, Percy is too young I won't be able to do it and I think my aunt may may remember if it was something she did if it was something she did we're good to go but if she says no I think you and your mum did that which I sort of feel like it is I'm just not sure well then I'd need to be um yeah I won't be able to do anything because it's within my era definitely won't be able to do anything but a few people have asked and I, I will further investigate it and I'll get back to you if if it's possible I have a feeling it won't be I'm liking that I'm just sort of adding some little textured pieces I might just pop it in there what the hang I'm going to couch down this little piece I don't know where I got it from that's got orange in it so that's really not not much to me more thread So stay tuned, you may see Percy the Peacock pop up as a design that you can get through my Etsy store or you may not. I'll, I'll let you know, I just need to find out. Some of those embroidery patterns, they're sort of, they're not old enough. I know a lot turn up in scans and um, things like that. So maybe, maybe it is fine. It certainly looks old by the colour of the paper, but that might just mean that it's sat you know, in the sun. Oops. So I will get back to you. For those who were interested in making a Percy themselves. Oops. Oh my goodness me. I need a proper knot. You probably can't even see what I'm doing. I just, I don't know, I just had to get this little morsel of yarn in here. You'll probably never see it because it's so pale, but I like how it's loopy. And I just felt like it needed to go there. The tree will be, ow, yowch. The tree will be pretty simple. Maybe I can raise that up a bit. Now it just looks like a mess. No, stick to the original plan by couching it across the bottom there, just as a little bit of interest. We're coming into winter um, in Australia. So I'm actually on the hunt for some interesting yarns it's sort of a, a textile that I haven't investigated a lot because I've sort of just been trying to build up basic threads just so that I've got, you know, some colours to work with and ribbon. But um, because winter's coming, we're going to be seeing all these gorgeous yarns pop up everywhere. So I'm going to take a little note of them. Well, you know, not pen and paper but I'm going to take note of them as I look at them and think along the lines of actual uh, needlework more so than you know making a jumper or, or a jacket or a blanket and I think I might be able to build a little collection of textile elements so I just thought I'd mention that. That's sort of the next thing on my supplies list. Just have a little look through the wool section. Sometimes it's real ordinary yarn, but there might be something that's got some little lumps and bumps and twists and 
that, or even can be pulled apart. It might be two, three plies twisted together to create, um, create something. I'm fiddling around here. You guys probably can't even see what I'm doing. This this thread that I'm using has these little loops and I've started stitching the loops up, which is probably a complete waste of my time here. But they sort of look really cool coming up out of the image. You can only really see them on the tree trunk. So like I said, I'm probably just wasting my time, but... I might just stop what I'm doing there. I can do that later off camera. I'm just going to bring that thread back. There's one more loop that I didn't stitch up as I come along there and decided I was going to do such a thing. It sort of looks like a little plant. So I'm going to do that. There we go. All right, finish that thread off. I'll bring it up to the camera so you can see what I just wasted 10 minutes doing. That's just so typical slow stitch, isn't it? You get these little areas you start concentrating on and then you're like, oh, that's 20 minutes. Can I see my effort? Not really. See the little loops there? You can't see that one, so that's why I stopped because I'm sort of, you know, wasting time. But I do like those little loops there. I might go back and pin them up a little bit, but, you know, at the end of the day, I can't even see them. So anyway, we're going to move on. And I'm going to put a few little invisible stitches down. on the tree. Um, actually, I might do an overcast stitch because it's a really, um, it's a linen that will fray. So I'm going to do a little bit more work on that and come up the side of it so that it just doesn't disintegrate. Needle and thread. So I think we've nutted out the design. I'll pop a few little bristles and plant-like material in around the piece. That will come up the side, sort of connecting it all without that harsh, harsh, you know, cross that's happening here. Like, it's not too bad, but I just felt like it needed to be softened as we went from one story to another. I will just overcast that little embroidered piece in there. Then I might have a look at some pearls or some French knots and maybe embellish it a little. We'll see. So by the time you're watching this you will have had Easter. For me, today is the day after the prompt, so it's Thursday. So I hope you had a lovely Easter weekend. We don't have any plans, just some friends coming over for dinner at this stage on actually um, Friday night. Tonight we're going to go to the movies feel like going to the movies. Don't know what we're going to watch. Don't know if there's much to watch, but anyway, we may attempt to go to the movies. And then the rest of the weekend, nothing. So I'm thinking I'm going to really sink my teeth into the French garden. So by the time you watch this video, I would have well and truly have a plan of attack for the French garden. And it will be the next video you see. As for the splash of colour, the one with all the doilies, I need to have a bit of a dig around to see if I have a doily garden scene already that has some form of seating in it. For some reason, I think I do. 
If not, I might even hop on Marketplace and see if I can find something. Maybe there's a doily design out there that has a beautiful scene with this with a garden seat in it. And I can incorporate that into the next section. So that'll be a bit of fun to have a hunt around, see if I can find that. Or maybe I can find a historical image of a seat in the garden that went on a doily. Sometimes they pop up. I have this doily that is a childhood memory and I've actually found it. I was up visiting my dad and I grabbed out my mum's um, box of doilies. She's got a container that she would keep them all in and it wasn't in there and I'm positive I had this on my duchess as a little girl. It was a cat. So anyway, um, I thought, oh, it's got to be here somewhere and I popped the box back in the linen cupboard and left it at that. I thought, oh, well, who knows where it's got to? It was a three-piece set and it had a blue... Hello, Fudgy. It had a blue bird. Speaking of cat, look who makes his entrance. It had a blue bird and this cat, and it was a three-piece. I think the two little smaller doilies um, were just the blue bird, and it used to sit on my Duchess set, and I just loved it as a kid, and Mum made it. So it's just a lot of memories. Anyway, could can't find it. Can't find it anyway. So anyway, the next morning, um, it was time to all have a shower and I'd returned a towel that I'd pinched from Dad to wash it here in Brisbane and then just popped it in my suitcase to take back. So I was right for my towel, but I needed to dig one out for my husband. So I went back to the linen cupboard and I dug out a towel for him. And in the process, as this towel come out from the pile of towels, guess what fell out? in front of me, all of the doilies with the cat. So I was pretty chuffed when I found it. I'll, uh, they're just sitting at the end of the table. There was a couple doilies and it, it sort of looks like they were just, they were washed and just folded up and shoved in. And she either didn't remember she had the box for all the doilies or maybe even my father and brother may have done it. Maybe they were in the wash. I don't know, but they were certainly, they were there. Hang on one moment. Oh, just bumped the camera. So I'm uh, getting sidetracked. So let's just talk this through before I get too sidetracked. So the plan is I will do some little, little sprigs of grass especially up that tree trunk. Tree trunk's now secure. All of this will be secured down and that little guy will just tuck in down that side to just connect it but finish it. So that's the plan with this little piece. Now let me get this pinned and I will work on that and... Um, get that finished so that little prompt on the champagne garden is done I don't have a lot of room over here but we'll see we'll see I have full faith in the girls that we will carry on down our garden path and it will just evolve now let me zoom up a little bit because I think we're in tight there we go so I'll show you this doily look at that isn't that just gorgeous? Just love that as a little girl. Look at all that stitching. Like, seriously, look at that. Mm. So much work. And the little flowers are all satin stitched. They're not lazy daisies. They're actually satin stitched. How good is that? There's even little stitches in the green there. If you can see, there's like little yellow seed stitches within those buds. I'd never have noticed that as a child. But oh boy. And look at the bluebird. 
just gorgeous. Look at that satin stitch there. Oh, not st uh, satin, stem stitch. Gee, I always get them around the wrong way. That stem stitch is so neat. Mm, now, in my memory, I think my mum did this. But I'm wondering if grandma did it. Sorry, mum, but grandma would have done this sort of full-on embroidery. I shall ask my aunt. She may... She may remember. Now, with it came, well, there's one of them. The other one must be here somewhere. No, it must be still in my suitcase. There's the, the side one, and there was two of those. Oh, they're beautiful. Look at that. And then, you know, what makes me think mum didn't do it is mum didn't know how to crochet so she may have got grandma to do this i i have a feeling it's grandma like mum loved embroidery but only did fairly simple stitches and she just didn't have time she was a, a mum and a farmer's wife so i just have a really big feeling this is grandma's work Plus, Grandma was very, very good at embroidery and was a judge at shows. And I just, oh, look at that. Look, turn it over and you've got colour. Turn it back and the colour's changed. So that, wow. So see that pink there? That pink there? That's how much it has faded. So is that, oh, yeah, look at that. So there's the original. So just with laundering, the colour has subsided in that pink because the pink in under here is a real lolly pink. It's amazing. There you go. So it's aged. It's gracefully aged. I actually prefer it now. It's more subtle. The other piece that was in with it, this is machine made, was this little one. These were pretty popular back in the day. These were often gifts for newlyweds. So that would make a beautiful journal cover. I often see these pop up at uh, op shops. So that was my find on the weekend. I must find the other one of those because I know it was with me. It might be still in the pocket that I tucked them into. So critters for the garden. But I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready to incorporate that into my panel. It's just some pieces you just, you know, want to hang on to. So that's my, my find on the weekend. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. We've merged a little seat in. Yeah, I love it. Once that's all embroidered, that'll look really, really pretty. All right, guys, I will leave it at that. You guys have a lovely day. Oh, here's this bit. Hang on. I'm sidetracked. This is the morsel left over from that. So I might just tidy that up and see if we can poke it in somewhere. Looks very plant-like. When I was cutting it out, I had a feeling it might work up in here. Just as a little tucked in morsel. No, don't like that. I think it's because I'm covering those green stripes. And I don't want to lose them. We don't mind it there. No. Tuck it under there. Nope. Might lose my writing. No. Nope. No. Nope.
don't I don't think there's a spot at all. So I'd lose that green if I went there. It sort of doesn't suit that theme there, I don't think. A little bunny. Nope. Right down the bottom. Don't think it needs it. it like it would work there. Don't mind it there. Because that was pushed into there a bit dimensional. Yeah, I like it there. There you go. We found a home for it. I was determined to find a spot. I'm just going to put a little pin. Do I not have any? There we go. I'm just going to tuck it into this little bouquet here just to give it a little more feature down the bottom. Okay, perfect. All right, I will leave you all alone now and I can finish off my prompt on my champagne garden. All right, guys, look after yourselves and I will see you all in the French garden next. Bye. Okay, hello, I'm back. I just thought I'd turn on the video and show you it finished have a few minutes left before the hour came so didn't do too much different to what we spoke about just secured these new elements this one on the side here happy with the way that sort of links it all together it's not so um, sectional it's starting to blend like some of the other areas I um, finished stitching down that little thread can't really see it but I know it's there made me enjoy the process some of the little loops are standing up on the tree trunk like no one will ever pick up that there's a thread there but i know what's there i then did just some little stitches through here to show some tufts of grass and then some um, colonial knots underneath and then i found those little green beads i've used in this piece throughout so i just popped a few little beads there just to build up a bit of a cluster here and a cluster here around that tree couple little stitches in the middle and then just underneath the little swing the tree itself I haven't added any um, pearls to it yet I'm just going to leave it for now I'm really enjoying that these cut out sections are showcasing that beautiful piece of uh, hemp fabric behind that's a piece and that one and that one that I got from a kit from Rachel probably 18 months two years ago so I'm really enjoying that they are still very visual I think this green even came from Rachel so yeah I'm pretty pleased with that there's this little tree has popped up in my scene so who knows where the next prompt will lead us I like how that piece there connects to this piece haven't yet stitched this little guy on I'll do that later but um, I thought I'd come back and show you the finished little morsel that's been added into the side here. All right, everyone, enjoy your uh, stitching that you have planned and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.